So what we're going to do is go through the basic setup for the Crow Max for Live devices. Uh, so I'm going to do the basic suite. I have some super simple patches patched up because uh, clearly we don't have a video on uh, a modular system, which is totally fine. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is um, I've got a sine wave oscillator. I've got a low pass gate. I've got just friends, I've got a filter, uh, three sisters, and I've got Ansible. And that's everything that's patched up. Um, so I'll walk through the patch points that I've made uh, for each one of the devices just to kind of show, uh, uh, just to um, so folks don't need to see it. They can just hear it. So anyway, all right. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, OK, let's give it a shot. Uh, so. First step of everything um, is a uh, command center. So that is uh, how you tell live to talk to Crow. It also allows Crow to talk to and listen to the various Max for Live devices. Um, Sam uh, actually gave me some incredible advice to be able to make this talk to more than just one uh, Crow at a time. Uh, so that will be implemented for right now, though. Everything is just one crow. Um, but yeah, so uh, every session with crow start. Ooh, someone someone typed something. What do we got? Oh, we got Sam. Sam. Hi, Sam. Uh, so yeah, uh, every session with crow in Max for Live uh, starts with the command center uh, uh, device. And then uh, to start, I think we should just do a really basic uh, dual. So dual is a uh, uh, volt per octave plus uh, envelope pairing. So for um, for our choices, we have uh, outputs one and two, and outputs three and four coupled. Uh, that's just going to give you a volt per octave out of the first one and an envelope out of the second one. Um, the attack and decay is by default set to just a, a trigger, just a really quick trigger. Um, but you can manipulate those to get a, a nice uh, AD envelope. So now that I have that device on there, I'm actually going to rename these tracks uh, so I don't lose my mind. Uh, and I also figured out yesterday how to make that track name change with the actual device that's loaded. So again, uh, I'll be working on stuff tonight. So cool. So on Command Center, I'm going to specify my crow. And then I'm just going to enable uh, MIDI. And I'm just going to use my uh, computer keyboard as the uh, interf interface here. Uh, and I'm going to say uh, volt per octave out the first output and an envelope out of the second, which should get us. There we go. Cool. So just really basic. Uh, volt per octave is going uh, out to a, a sine wave uh, oscillator. And then the uh, uh, second output on Crow is going to a low pass gate. And that's just pinging that. Um, the bass note here is saying uh, uh, which MIDI note to center uh, zero volts on. So I have that by default set to 60. Uh, if you lower it, then you're going to get higher pitches. If you raise it, you'll get lower pitches. Um, I'm going to bring it back to 60 because that's just a nice central point. Uh, you can add slew, so you get little like wobbly little fun little effects there. Uh, and then let's bring out the decay. Uh, I don't, I have just like a main key passive low pass gate, so uh, we're not going to get a, a, a beautiful ping uh, that lasts and, and decays uh, very gradually, uh, but just for the sake of Cool. Um, 
it, it is a beautiful decay. Uh, I don't mean to disparage it. I friggin' love this low pass gate. Uh, we'll add a little bit of uh, attack there. Soften that. There we go. Ooh, Sam had a great idea to automate or modulate the bass for a sequence transposition. Friggin' incredible idea. Uh, yeah, so every parameter that you see on the Max for Live devices is able to be mapped. Um, so you could use a, 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 an external controller. You could also just create an automation lane uh, to affect that there. I'm going to bring these back down. Uh, so really simple proof of concept here is to throw an arpeggiator uh, to arpeggiate this sine wave oscillator. Um, all of the Max for Live devices, if you're going to put a MIDI effect in the chain, you'll want that ahead of the Max for Live device because it will send the MIDI through this into this. It's a, it's a left to right uh, signal chain. So now that I've got my arpeggiator loaded, Um, I'll make this a little bit faster, give it a little bit of random. So cool. That's just a, a really basic, uh, good starting point uh, for the dual uh, device. Oh, man. Uh, no one can really ask questions in real time. Kyle, do you have any questions about this device? So I'm very new to Max for Live, and I'm wondering, um, you can use kind of, you can use non-Max for Live devices to interact with this Max for Live device. Yeah, yeah. So the Max for Live, uh, the, the fact that this is a Max for Live device just means that that's how it was made. It doesn't affect um, what it will listen to or how you can control it. It'll work just like a standard live device. So any MIDI effect in the uh, live MIDI effect chain here, anything that generates MIDI, uh, if it's a Max for Live, a different Max for Live device, as long as it is in front of uh, uh, the dual device, then it will listen to whatever is in front of it. Cool? Cool. Sweet. Um, dope. All right. Uh, continuing on this path, let me actually um, go with another kind of like two device example. Um, so started a new session here. Again, every single time I'm just going to load that command center. And then let's actually do the JF synth device. Uh, this is probably everyone's kind of the thing everyone was most excited about, uh, being able to access the uh, teletype modes for uh, just friends, um, which this device uh, does. I, I basically um, just took the most generic application of that, which is let me play it like a poly synth. Oh my gosh! Oh no! That's all good. Kyle dropped water. <laughs> uh, we're good, though. Um, <laughs> oh, that's so good. Okay, uh, we're back. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, again, loaded my command center. Uh, I've also loaded JF Synth. So, in my command center, I'm going to choose my crow. And then in JF Synth, I only have Crow and Just Friends like directly connected to each other, so there is no um, uh, there's no pull-ups between them. Uh, so I am going to uh, enable the pull-ups on Crow uh, to be able to uh, communicate over to Just Friends, and then I'm going to connect to Just Friends. And you heard that noise uh, when you. Uh, connect to Just Friends. As long as um, Just Friends is in sound and transient mode, that act of connecting will cause all six voices to sound at once and then decay based on your panel settings. 
Um, so that's a really easy way to tell whether or not you are actually connected uh, the way that you need to be connected. Um, so cool. Again, same kind of deal, right? Like, okay, what happens if we uh, load an arpeggiator ahead of this just friends device, and it's going to be uh, the same thing that we experienced with the uh, sine wave over here. Um, let me enable the MIDI. love adding that little bit of random and it's a you know freaking gorgeous voice uh, i have it running through three sisters cool uh kyle missed everything because he was cleaning up water kyle question it looked like it was pinging all of the different voices of just friends instead of just like one of them a bunch of different times um is that i guess is there any way that like you can play that how can you play them all at once oh yeah 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 because yeah. Uh, so that was uh just because i was running it through an arpeggiator that it was doing them staggered um but if i turn that off uh, i can do chords so it's all just about how are you treating that midi ahead of the device so if we don't have something like an arpeggiator in front of it then just friends can be played uh all six notes can be played at once uh i don't know how to make chord shapes but there we go that's such a lovely little sound Ooh, andrew is on ah. just letting us know that it's not relevant to him i am glad that you're here though you should be you can walk over please uh kyle is here uh, he has recently spilled water. That is going to be the running joke of the uh, live stream. Um, a phantom pushed it over. <laughs> anyway, uh, cool. Back to business. So, um, yeah. Uh, again, everything that is ahead of the device uh, will affect the way that the MIDI is translated uh, into control. Um, Andrew, we're probably going to be here maybe like for another 30 minutes. I, I don't want this to go crazy long. Um, cool. So we have an arpeggiator, just as, again as another proof here. Great. Um, the way that this JF synth device is coded, uh, you can also, uh, it has velocity sensitivity. So uh, for example, if I wanted to load one of Live's velocity devices, again, I want it to be in front of the JF synth because it is conditioning MIDI into that device. Um, so actually uh, this will change the volume of the, um, the notes. So if I turn it all the way down, I'm hitting notes here, but nothing is uh, actually being heard because they are at a zero velocity. Um, so if I turn that up, then the volume uh, increases because they're getting hit with more and more velocity. Uh, what is kind of a fun thing to do with this velocity device is to add a bit of uh, expression. Um, so I'm going to turn that back up. I'm going to change the shape of this curve, and then I'm going to tell Live to introduce some random deviance. So I get this nice uh, effect where some notes are louder than others. If, if I had a MIDI keyboard with velocity sensitivity on it, then uh, if I uh, tapped the note softly, just like a piano, um, Just Friends would sound that note at a lower volume than if you hit it uh, uh, super hard. you have any questions on this one? Um, could you like run six arpeggiators on the six voices within Just Friends? Mm. Um, the way that this device is coded, it is really just going to do a round robin 
uh, style. So all of the MIDI is uh, uh, going to hit voice one, two, three, four, five, six, back to one. Um, so they're... Uh, with the way that the device is currently set up, no, you wouldn't be able to sequence just one of the uh, channels on Just Friends, um, but that is a really easy modification. Uh, it just is changing the uh, message that is coming out of this device to Crow. Um, this just seemed kind of like the, I like the round robin style because uh, uh, um, you can kind of self-patch and um, have notes modulate uh, like a, a filter, like three sisters. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice, uh, it gives a nice effect, but anyway, um, cool. So those are like the two kind of like, uh, uh, play my keyboard notes happen devices. Um, so from there, I'm going to actually showcase, uh, pulling, triggers and control voltage from the modular into Ableton Live to control um, control your uh, software. Uh, so again, going to load up um, Command Center. Another MIDI track. I am going to actually load the INS device. Um, so this is uh, two really simple things with an internal matrix of uh, of seemingly complex things. Um, uh, ignoring this, uh, we have an input identifier to say like, hey, which input of Crow do you want to monitor the CV levels? And then on the other side, we have an, uh, if you would like to like a sequence um, from a volt per octave sequencer, uh, if you'd want to sequence a software synth or uh, a virtual piano or something like that, then you have actually two options for how to tell Ableton Live that a note event has taken place. Um, and so you can set that to either an arpeggiator, which would be synced to Live's clock, or you could say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to monitor the input one, the other input. I want that every time there's a trigger there, I want that to create a note for Ableton live. Um, so let me just show kind of what this looks like again, command center, choose my crow. Uh, and then let me, uh, choose, uh, the wavetable synth here. Um, so we'll start basically with, uh, with a sine wave. So, uh, I have a pretty basic sequence uh, set up on Ansible. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say uh, input one is gonna be my pitch control voltage. So that's that's the volt per octave. So nothing is currently patched to input one. I'm gonna turn on input one, has a really static CV, and then I'm gonna plug in my volt per octave sequence. And then you'll see that this input CV is starting to move. Um, so that is taking the volt per octave and just showing us the raw voltage. But it's not actually making any noise. And it's not making any noise because I haven't told Ableton what to do with that CV as far as notes go. Uh, I haven't selected, hey, you know what, sync to arpeggiate from Ableton's clock. Um, or take the alternate input and every time there's a trigger at the other input, so we've selected input one for our CV, so the other input would just be input two. Um, so I'm gonna select this one and say, every time there's a trigger uh, at input two, that's when I want you to make a note. So let me plug in. Cool. And I'm actually gonna throw a note length uh, device in between. So the same way that um, before, let me actually lower this now, the same way that before when we were working with MIDI to Crow, we wanted all of the MIDI devices to be before the Crow communicator. When we're translating MIDI from Crow, we're going to want Crow to be at the start because that is feeding MIDI, again, that left to right structure, Crow is feeding MIDI out this way. 
Um, so that's when I threw that note length device in there. It's, it's set to 100 milliseconds. That's pretty plucky. Uh, and that's why we have these nice short notes. If I turn it off, we're back to those longer gates. Um, cool. So I'm going to uh, futz with the sequence. Um, so what about this weird little middle device, right? Like this looks like a freaking mess. Um, what this does is it, uh, it's a really opinionated approach. Um, what I like doing, uh, when I'm exclusively working in modular is I like using, uh, the control voltage that I am sequencing a voice with. I like using that to control other elements within uh, my modular. Um, so that's basically what this does. It takes the incoming CV, which right now is a, a volt per octave. This could be an LFO, it could be whatever you want. Um, and what it is gonna do is it is going to translate that to CC messages. So for example, if I, uh, I have six uh, outlets here. So if I take one of them, and let's say I, I map that to the uh, volume slider here. Then it is taking that pitch voltage. It is translating that to a MIDI CC, and it is automating this slider along with the pitch. But this isn't actually connected to anything, right? So it doesn't really... There's no audible effect. So let's connect that to something that will have an audible effect. Um, within the wavetable synth, uh, there's this little slider here, which will morph between waveforms. So uh, let's see if that is an interesting thing. So I, if I were to automate this, yeah, you might get something cool. Um, so I'm going to take that, and I'm going to say, you know what? With, uh, with the pitch, uh, also modulate this the same way. Which is fun. Um, it's honestly maybe going a little too far into these other waveforms. I kind of like it being closer to the sine wave. So I'm going to reduce how high this CC goes. And that's just by turning this down. So you see that that kind of changes. Uh, another way to constrain or compress the, uh, uh, or sorry, this wouldn't um, necessarily constrain it. This would actually expand it. So this is a good way to constrain or compress the expression. This would be a way to expand it. So I am, I have some options here where it's saying the low voltage, let's say the floor of the voltage that's coming in is set to zero and the high voltage is set to 10 volts. But if we're looking at this here, this isn't going past four point whatever volts. Um, so if I bring this down, then that expands how far four volts goes. So okay, so now I have that going. I'm gonna also modulate this filter in time. Let's say I want these to be maybe like a little bit off from each other. Uh, so this is kind of like the, the floor and this is the ceiling. So this is constraining 
the range of how far this little frequency knob will go when it's turning the CV into CC. Yeah, so we'll get a wider range here, closer to the lower end of this frequency. This will push us toward the middle, the closer these are to each other. And there's very minute. And then pretty broad strokes. And then these things can modulate each other, and that's where we get into like some, some weird and wild stuff. So if I uh, map this to itself, oh, we got nothing there. Oh no, there we go. So now we're starting to get some weird things. And then, yeah, okay, modulate that. This modulates that. Oh, that one, that one killed it. <laughs> So, just a, a, a fun little playground to uh, modularize live. Cool. Turn that off. Um, Um, let's see. We did those. Okay. Um, going further into the output uh, ideas. So uh, we're going to switch over to the outs device. And this is a, a bunch of different utilities uh, that you can use to talk to the modular. So, um... Hang on here. Let me see. Which one would be good? Okay. Let's do this. I'm going to load a couple of these. I'm going to load four of them because there are four outputs on Crow. Uh, so let's just see what we what kind of fun we can have. So out one, out two, out three. Now for this is our command center. Um, cool. So again, choose my crow. Um, this, let's see, the way things are patched here, I think, yeah. I'm going to go to output two, and I'm going to have that be a clock signal. And then I'm going to do the same thing for output three. I'm going to set these off from each other. So I have a, a quarter note clock and a 3 sixteenths clock. Um, you'll notice you can't hear anything, and that is strictly because uh, Live's transport is not running. Um, so if I were to engage Live's transport, Those clocks are going out, uh, as, and they're triggering, they're opening up a, a low-pass gate, um, and that is gating uh, a sine wave oscillator and a variable, um, variable wave oscillator. So you get this nice little interplay between the two. having it 
it's separated. Um, but yeah, you, it is really up to you uh, how you want to place that. Um, this is just kind of the way that I've approached methodically, you know, doing this a, a billion times. I just load it up on its own track. Um, so cool. So uh, going back here, we have output two and output three, putting out divisions of live's main clock. If I stop the transport, the clock stop. If I start them, the clock start back up. So now, uh, just to demonstrate that this is a fun, cool thing, uh, I am going to say out of output one to actually put volt per octave out. And then I'm going to load another one of those arpeggiators ahead of it because this is going to push MIDI information into this output device. And I'm going to set this rate to be uh, neither 1 4 or 3 16 is probably a fun one. Let's see what we get. So that's uh, a volt per octave that's being sequenced at one eighth notes. Uh, one of the gates is five sixteenths, and the other one is at quarter notes. Um, so yeah, this is a, a fun way to use three outputs of Crow to make something pretty musical. With literally, I mean, I've got Crow, I've got uh, an STO, and I've got a, a dual pass or a, a, a dual passive low pass gate. Yeah, it's a, a good amount of expression. Um, I have a fourth output though, uh, so I'm gonna automate the, the variable wave shaper uh, with an LFO for output four. And let me plug that in. I'll just get a little bit of movement. stop everything stops because uh, yeah that's all synced to life's clock um, the other uh, modes here um, we have a uh, remote which could be used to uh, automate control voltage so again I'll just uh, yeah it's just basically a, a knob that says how much voltage is going to get spit out. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a lot like channel three of maths there. Um, this can be automated itself, uh, which is nice. So if I were to um, uh, uh, record those movements, then I could play them back. Um, so let's actually give that a shot, because uh, that might be fun. So outs remote so yeah the work of the vast universe that goes into making this visual mm. I would like to control feedback or something like that. There we go. Um so yeah those that little automation is automating our guy there. Um, cool. Last little thing uh, that I want to do is use one of the devices that Sam has made. Um, 
well, just for proof of concept, we'll do it all on the same track. Um, macros. Uh, ooh, actually, I had this saved. I'm going to load the saved one because it's a better example. I'm so sorry. And it's set up in the in the command center on its own track, but it doesn't have to be that way. Um, so cool. So what macros is, is a way to communicate back to Crow. Uh, if Crow is running uh, an, um, an application through Druid. Uh, so uh, you can send these chunks of Lua code back to your Druid script with MIDI. So, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, let me actually just load up Druid to kind of uh, demonstrate what I'm getting at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so cool. Let me grab my... Um, where's my little Bowery? Here we go. Uh, so I'm going to grab the path name from Bowery. Hop in there. Load Druid. Cool. And then I'm going to run uh, less concepts. And then give me a hot sec. Cool. Ah, of course, less concepts dot Lua. No. There we go. So, Less Concepts is currently running uh, through Druid. Less Concepts also has a ton of variables that you can futz around with. Um, so, what macros allows you to do is, on demand, change any of those variables with a MIDI key. So, if I hit C2, then I'm going to send the currently running script, this chunk of Lua code, which changes the, the rule uh, that Less Concepts is using. So, uh, oh, duh, I have to connect to Command Center. Cool. Now, if I hit a MIDI key, So I hit C2, and that sent this rule message. If I hit uh, C sharp 2, that sends this message. D2 sends this message. D sharp 2 sends this message. So this is a really easy way to uh, interface with a currently running Druid script without having to go into Druid and say, yeah, you know what, I'm going to, all right, I'm going to live code rule equals 103, which is totally something you can do, but this gives you uh, a chance to execute all of these Lua messages as, uh, as MIDI, uh, which allows for a bit more ease of expression, so I could swap between these two. This little bit here for a uh, MIDI note is received, which influences a change. Uh, so the MIDI notes are just used to execute whatever is in the box. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's making this noise is less concepts running through Druid. And then I am changing arguments on the fly with these messages, which I could absolutely do if I just wanted to live code that. So for example, if I wanted to uh, change, the, change these two parameters, bit and octave, I could type that in. Oops. 
took me a little bit more time than I really uh, would want in a performance setting though, even though I would love to be able to call these things up on demand and code them in real time. So right now I can actually mess with the uh, octave there and then just call it. Yeah. <laughs> so this is just a really clean way of playing a script that you wrote in Druid. Oh no. Oh, this is great. Oh yeah. Oh, this is fantastic. It gives the uh, little like, hey, dummy, you did something wrong right in the Druid REPL. There we go. <laughs> That's fantastic, Sam. That's incredible. Uh, so that, yeah, gave me a really clear idea of what the heck was going wrong. Uh, so now if I change that back to one, then we get lower. Then we get even lower. Yeah, so Ableton, yep, Sam is right. Ableton's re-adding these quotes when I pull up the set, which... turned off the synth, so now Druid has lost its connection. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's pretty much the shape of stuff I wanted to show, at the very least. This is maybe too rudimentary of a question. Get in. This is maybe too rudimentary of a question, but um, if Less Concepts was generating the sequence, and like, w what was the sound source, I guess? Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry. The sound source was still the sine wave oscillator. Oh, okay. okay yeah. Got yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I didn't walk through that patch at all. Uh, yeah, uh, for all of this, I was pretty much just using the STO, uh, which is sine wave oscillator with a variable wave oscillator built into it, uh, or just friends for that earlier example. Um, but yeah, cool. That is, uh, let's see if anyone's got things. Uh, Andrew is mad about the text editors in Max, which is uh, completely fair. Um, Cool. I guess that's it. One question I have is, can you run all this stuff at the same time? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, so, I mean, this will be a bit of a... Let me power back up here. Um, yeah, let's see. Run Command Center. Let's... Do JF synth. Let's throw some of these outs on there. Actually, let's do a couple of those, and then let's also do an ins. I don't know what the ins is really going to do right now, uh, just because I don't have the audio. I would probably use the ins if I was uh, maybe like modulating the delay or something like that, but I don't have audio routing back into the Ableton session. Um, but yeah, so in once I choose my crow, cool. Let's say the LFO there. Uh, dope. Let's put that to output one. And then output two is a clock signal. Uh, and then let's say input one was going to map to something. <laughs> Um, let's, uh, pretend that, uh, I have all the rowdy, all the audio routed back into Ableton Live. So cool. Um, and let me load up just another arpeggiator here. Oh, Christ.
actually, yeah, wait, I did like that trigger. Okay, cool. So there we go. So now we have just friends, sequencing just friends. We've got this uh, tempo synced output, uh, output one, FMing the uh, three sisters filter. And this quarter note uh, is just opening uh, the low pass gate sine wave oscillators. I was, you know, I'm not sequencing the sine wave oscillator at all, but that's giving us a nice little... I can choose to change that trigger into a gate, and I can make its width wider or shorter. I can tell it to hit that gate harder. enough of that cool uh i'm gonna flip back to the chat see if anyone has legitimately anything that they want to see or are wondering <gasps> andrew has a conceptual question andrew what's your conceptual question i'm sorry that was so many minutes ago Waiting, waiting. <gasps> he is typing. <laughs> ah, examples using with. Um, that, I would honestly, I'm, I'm going to put him on the spot. I think uh, Sam is going to have some really good uh, tips for building devices for Max for Live um, that would communicate out to with. Uh, currently, there's nothing in the uh, the Max for Live suite that does uh, that, but it would be pretty trivial to the same way that we're sending really specific messages from uh, uh from from uh, Ableton into Just Friends using the commands that power this, you could feasibly just make one for with. Um, what is the advantage of doing this stuff on modular versus just using Sense and Ableton? Yeah, I mean, there's a. I think that that's going to come down to how you like working. Um, for me, uh, there are a lot of happy accidents. Uh, just having physical control over things uh, and not having um, not having to do uh, a too much conceptual prep uh, and just being able to say like, you know, out of these four outs, I just want these events to happen and then everything else is pretty hands-on. Um, I, I honestly think that there's a lot of cool opportunity to cross-pollinate between, uh, uh, between live and the modular with this toolkit, but I don't, I don't think that this should be someone's like, oh shit, I'm going to go drop 2,500 bucks on a modular system if they don't already have one. Um, this is definitely, oh yeah, there's going to be a lot of responses, uh, if you were to post that online, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I think, uh, uh, there's, there's just a layer of cross pollination, um, with the actual voltage that I am not able to replicate sitting down in front of Ableton every time. Uh, and for some reason, working with the physical hardware, it does happen more frequently. Um, using Just Friends to uh, FM the same filter that it's going into is is kind of joyful. Um, yeah, let's see. 
really really putting my shit on the line by being like, yeah, I'll, I'll come up with an example uh, and make that slower. fun uh maybe it maybe that's the answer andrew is sometimes it's just more fun anyway cool uh i think that's probably it friends uh let me know if you have any other questions inside of the thread um but yeah i don't know thanks for doing this uh this is a fun experiment thank you for being here kyle is it, three thousand times more fun to have a, a person here uh with me as i did this and uh and thank you all for spending part of your uh, sunday night uh with me so uh uh love y'all uh, and talk to you soon <laughs>